Now, how does this all relate to you, the guy who's listening to this video? One, it's a whole bunch of speculation and observations on my part. And like I said, I have no way of quantifying that, telling you that that's fact and true. It's just my speculations. But when you combine all that, how that affected me, is I always put steels in these things, unless they already have them like this one does. I always put steel locating pins. I always glue the cases together with 1184 plus a gasket. I always put the case screws in with 1184, which kind of glues them together. And I just did that instinctively, but that might have been one of the reasons. Little things like that added up to come up with a more reliable build. And, um, and as I started getting into it, I started putting in the, the later version of the wrist pins, you know, and what I could, I'd use the later version of the cranks, but a lot of times it can't. The saws I've put together, they lasted. So for 90% of the people building these saws, stick in the steels, use this stuff here between the gasket and the cases and then the screws. Make sure you use these steel pins and then just run them. I think you'll be fine, is my, my humble opinion. If you can get these thin wrist pins and stock pistons, I think that's probably a, a good move as well. I'm going to go back and use, I believe I'm going to use their wrist pin and their piston just because I want to prove that even with the junk parts, these things will still last long enough to have fun with, right? My hunch is the first time I take down a bunch of trees with this thing, it'll have paid for itself. And uh, I guess that's really the bottom line. So I've covered the backdrop to why I believe the steps I take in building 372s uh, makes a difference. Like I said, the steel locating pins, 1184 to dampen the vibration, steel cage bearings, so um, they can handle a little bit more heat. I think that's a good strategy if you have the cases apart. But if you don't have them apart, you know, and they're still running good, don't kill yourself. Just tighten the screws and keep going. Don't make it a... My, I, guess, I guess the last part of it is if they haven't come apart now, they're not going <laughs> to. So that's really it. I think that's a video. I think what I wanted to do was to show you this. Set my prop over here. And... Uh, just get this crank in there and put the cases together so we can get to the next phase. And call that a video. So let me see if I can do that. Let me just get this thing together. I think that's clean enough. Like I said, we don't have to be in a clean room to make this work. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. And I'm debating whether I should show you how to put these together with the Husqvarna shop tool or my shop tool. So I think what I'm going to do, I think what I'm going to do on this is, um, I think what I'm going to do is do one half with the Husqvarna shop tool so you can see what that looks like. They're like 40 bucks online and that's my recommendation for, for getting a, an assembly tool. Then I'm going to do the other half with my shop tool so you can see the, the difference in, in uh, and I, I don't like I said I don't think a person with husky should buy my stuff I really don't I think that's really it was designed for at the time for me it was a it was a to bring the steel people into my world and uh, let me see if I got a heat gun around somewhere. So I warm these up on the wood stove and let me see if I can reasonably quickly get them together. They're warm but they're not hot and they hold their heat not very long. They're good at shedding heat in a hurry. So if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to hustle.
pull this one together first, just really quickly. I'm going to use the Husqvarna tool on this to pull it through. And just really because they work, they're cheap, and I think pretty much anyone can get their hands on. Need your two wrenches, and then you can go like this and just pull it right in. Make sure your connecting rod is not going to bind up on the cases. That's the one thing you have to do on these. See, one of the things that I like to do with mine is I've got a handle so I can just basically let it sit on the hand up in there a little easier. But these work. Damn it, stay up there. Just snug it right up. Don't go, any, don't go tight, just go where it bottoms, and that one just did, so now I can uh, back this off, and back this off. And I use this right here, because it's got a recess, and it sits on the case. And you don't want to pull too hard because you can literally break the case. The bearing, that bearing pocket wall right there is very, very thin. So just bring it to where it stops and don't go any further than that. Now, the next thing that I have to do is put this stuff out, out, of, my, out of my way and get some 1184. That's the Husky shop tool. Let me get some 1184 on that and make sure one more time that I have a clean surface here. Very important. These are still warm. Now, I've made all kinds of noise about how I put the bearings in with heat. And I really don't see a reason not to do that. I think that's really the best way of putting in bearings is the heat differential approach. Where I heat the cases up with a turkey oven. And especially with the steel cage bearings, they just drop right in. I've done it so many times, I don't really see the sense in, you know, covering it special. But uh, I don't know how many times I've done the case assembly. Alright, 
So, 1184 everywhere. I warmed it up because it's about 40 degrees here. Now, I'm going to use my tool to squeeze this set, set together. Let me set the gasket here first. Now, one of the things that I do pretty quick is I like to set uh, the case screws in there and it's more for alignment than anything else. You know. I'm just going to use the same case screws that came out of there. I need to stress, I need to stress that I'm not pulling with these screws. I'm not pulling with these screws. I think the other thing I need to get on there really quick is a little bit of oil. dump on the seal. Yes. All right. So let me get these going. So now I'm going to use my set of tools. Basically, how this works, it's the same basic concept. And uh, I like to put a washer, top hat, and it's going to push on the case. And I just basically thread it onto the end of the crank, like so. And then uh, make sure it goes right to the bottom. In baseball, all I gotta do is this. And then I don't have to monkey with the multiple wrenches. I just take this one right here and just start squeezing it together. See, I can have the one hand hold the um, connecting rod or whatever else. I don't have to keep the other wrench on the end of the, of the puller. I just take this thing and put it right on in. Once I've got it bottomed out, just back that one screw off and this should just come right off of there. And that's how my case Tool works. Before things cool off too much, let's get this thing. nice and free and I need to tap it. Now one of the things I can do with my tool that I think is a little bit different than some of the other tools is I can 
I can do this. I'm going to do it quickly while the cases are still warm. Center that crank. That's not bad. Sure. When you play that game, that this is bottomed out. Otherwise, you can break that. No. Uh, you can pretty easily break the end of the crank off. Wow, that's tight. I guess they are tight. That one needs a little bit more. And that's really pretty, pretty close, but look how free that is. Now I got oil on that bearing, and I'm going to drop some oil in here. I hope the cases are together. And I'm going to drop some oil in on the connecting rod bearing. Just a little bit. What do you think? Let me make sure. What I have to do next is pretty obvious. Is I gotta clean up the top end and the cylinder. You know, start assembling this saw. And I think what I'll do is, like I normally do, is I'll put the handle on first, find one, put it on, put the tray on basically get that together, probably put the flywheel on, stuff like that, and then we'll build this thing and see if it runs. I think that'll be fun, right? But now I'm just going to let that dry. I think, I'm gonna, I think what I'm going to do is go take this and set it on the fireplace and let it cook that uh, 1184 a little bit for me. So anyway, 